Hello! Happy St. Patrick's Eve! If such a thing even exists, what's going on? Stephen Lewis, that's me. Uh, radio for almost, uh, tw God, almost 20 years. Has it been that long since I've been a junior in college? And um, now I talk, I review movies, uh, I am opinionated, probably more so than I should be, but uh, I like talking. And I like sharing my thoughts with other people and, you know, getting their feedback and input and all that good stuff. Uh, it's fun, you know. It's a hobby. It's a podcast. It is what it is. This is life as we know it. And every day it's something a little bit different. But today, I'm uh, going to talk about Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Do me a favor. Like, follow on the socials at Stephen Lewis on the air. Uh, click the links here. I would appreciate it. It'd be cool as I try to grow this thing and build this thing. Uh, i got some guests coming up next week, but just trying to get through St. Patrick's Day and through the weekend this go-round and let you in on the secret. Now, if, if you are looking forward to seeing this movie, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to keep this pretty basic for the most part, get into some spoilerific stuff uh, a few days from now when everybody's had a chance to see it, but I never like to uh, ruin things for people before they get there, so... Uh, let's jump right into this today. The DC Universe has had its fair share of problems, and you could arg make the argument that Marvel is kind of in a bit of a lull right now. I think it's more so Marvel stuck the landing, and they've had a hard time, you know, recapturing some of that magic. And when you are as good as Endgame and what the Marvel Cinematic Universe was, is... Uh, that makes it difficult. But DC seemed to just get off to a rough start from day one. And, you know, time will tell how it's going to pan out with James Gunn and Peter Safran in charge now. But it certainly didn't come out of the gates with a roar. And it'll be interesting to see how Fury of the Gods does because people don't really know what's going to happen. And this leads back to Black Adam. And they brought Henry Cavill back as Superman. Now they didn't. But I think what happened beginning is DC was a victim of trying to do too much too quickly. Uh, Marvel, it took them 10 years to get where they were. It took them at least a good five or six before we saw the Avengers for the first time. And DC right out of the gate. Let's cram everything we can into a Superman sequel that wasn't really a true Superman sequel. Uh, I loved Ben Affleck. He might be one of my favorite Batman ever, but now he's gone other than in the flash this will be his last appearance so it's just it was just a stumbling block now some people are being recast some people are not the early word on the aquaman sequel that'll be out in december is that it's garbage which is a shame because the first one was really pretty good uh the first wonder woman was good the second one was garbage and then you had two different versions of the justice league uh, one better than the other, but neither I would call great. And it's a shame because I think Henry Cavill is a great Superman that just suffered from not having really strong material. So there's that. But Shazam! was one of the surprises of the DC Cinematic Universe when it came out a few years back. And I went into that movie with very low expectations and really enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised. I was hoping for big with superpowers, and I got big with superpowers. There was a lot to like about it. It was very simple. It looked very good from a CGI standpoint, and it was fun. It had heart to it. You genuinely liked the characters, and I think Zachary Levi played well. People gave him a lot of crap for the padded suit that he wore last time around. This time around, the costumes look a lot better. The ironic thing is, a lot of this cast, uh, superhero-wise, the Marvel family, was or the Shazam family now uh, was actually cast in a movie called Justice League Mortal that was supposed to take place all the way back in 2007 is when the Justice League was supposed to come out but uh, the writer strike hit they were filming it in Australia the guy who it slips my name right now the guy who did Mad Max Fury Road was going to be the one to direct it and it just never played out it didn't pan out the way it was supposed to it did not work out the way it was supposed to therefore it never case all the light of day. You can search online and see what like some of the costumes were going to look like and their take on some things. And it was basically a loose adaptation of Justice League Mortal where basically Batman knows how to beat the entire Justice League and they find out. And it just it's a good story comic book wise. Might have made a good movie. Not sure what they would have done with this cast, but, you know, that's not for this conversation. Uh, but Shazam is back in round two. 
But Shazam's coming back for round two after a strong first outing. And this time around, uh, you get a little bit more of the family thing, which I think a lot of people like the family dynamic this time around. Uh, you get a little more of the family in action from a superhero standpoint, which works pretty well for the first time around. I love Zachary Levi at this in this character, but I think there will be some people who kind of get old, a little tired of him playing too much of a child. But at the end of the day, he that's what he is and that's what the character is. Um, the villains were cool. Halamirin and Lucy Liu were a lot of fun. And they kind of dive a little bit more into the Shazam lore. Basically, if you don't know who Shazam is, uh, you take a lot of, I believe, Greek characters and you get the strength, speed. It's basically Superman, but it's magical-based powers. And he's a little boy. He says the word Shazam and he becomes a champion, a superhero, a defender of people who need defending. And they pick up the mythos of that a little bit, and it just, it plays really well. I think the effects were pretty cool to watch the dragons and all those, the fighting. Um, had a couple of interesting twists here and there, and I think overall, like, it was a good sequel. Um, I the, spe- the first one will hold a special place in my heart, but as far as a number two goes, uh, it's pretty good. I don't think it's a letdown in any capacity. I think if you like the first one, uh, you will enjoy this one. If you didn't like the first one, you might enjoy this one. Um, and it's just, they, they did a lot right with this character, and there's a couple of post credit scenes that might point to where he's gonna go down the road, and he might make the cut, in the new DC universe, and I think you you could. I think what I've always said is the problem that Black Adam had with The Rock is The Rock wanted nothing to do with Shazam, which is a mistake because Black Adam is Shazam's... He's Lex Luthor to Shazam's Superman, so you needed that, and I think it would have played better if you would have somehow introduced Black Adam as the villain first and then went back and told the origin story, kind of what The Rock did in The Mummy where the Scorpion King was introduced in the second mummy and then they went back and told the scorpion king story i think it would have played a little better there's so many things wrong with black adam and yeah the rock did okay but i would have probably never let that script out i mean it was a you know we stole from the first avengers we stole from so many other movies and ideas from other movies i mean i love the hawkman character that Uh, Aldous Hodge played, but come on, his jet coming right up out of the basketball court of a mansion, could you have ripped off X-Men any more than that? Probably not, but uh, I think Black Adam would have played better in Shazam and then a solo outing, but it was good. Uh, Overall, I think worth your time. I think it's one of those movies that definitely needs to be seen on the big screen, and if it were me, and I certainly have no control over the DC Extended Universe, I would try to go out to The Rock and Henry Cavill and get... Shazam, Superman, and Black Adam all on one screen and make a third Shazam if this one makes enough money and close out this trilogy and kind of satisfy a lot of fans and a lot of people on all different fronts and then you can do whatever else you want with the rest of your DC plans going forward. So again, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, not the greatest comic book movie I've ever seen. It's certainly no Endgame, but it's certainly no Black Adam either. I would give it a probably 7 out of 10. Six and a half, seven out of ten, maybe even a seven and a half in some cases. Uh, go see it on the big screen and enjoy it and judge for yourself. That's it. That's what I got. Don't drink too much, especially if you're going out for St. Patrick's Day, uh, because you want to save that for tomorrow. Hopefully, if you were following along and playing in the March Madness that is Mar- the end of March in the NCAA brackets, your bracket isn't busted already and you're still alive in your poll. But either way, uh, stop listening to me and go spend time with the people you like, love, or tolerate because time is limited. So get out of here.